morning, Harmony Grove. Glad you are here this morning. If you are in the back, come on in and we will start with a couple announcements as we begin this morning. Our first announcement is on Wednesday night. We have church here. Downstairs, we have Little Wood Spores and Awana. And up here, we have prayer meeting, and that is on Wednesdays. Our second announcement, new to the announcement chain this morning, um, in your bulletin, you will see there's a blue insert, and it's your 2022 directory. Well, basically, what this is, if you need someone's information, um, you can look up it up in the directory and you can get it there. Um, we just ask that one person per family can fill it out. Even if your information hasn't changed, we still ask that you could fill it out and you can return it in one of the um, baskets over there by May 29th. And our goal is to print it out on June 1st. Our final announcement we announced the last week is Next week, we will be having our Spring Open Arms Fellowship. It is a yellow insert in your bulletin. There will be a main um, dish provided. We just ask that you could um, bring a side or dessert on that next week, and that will be after the service. Those are announcements this morning. I'm gonna have Miss Terry pray behind us, and we're gonna get started worshiping in a moment. Good morning, if you'd pray with me, please. Father God, we are grateful to be in your house again this morning. We are grateful for the sunshine and that um, that you have brought us here for a reason, that there are no accidents, that you have something for us today. I pray, God, that as we sing your praises, as we listen to the word that Pastor brings, that our hearts will open, our hearts will be like sponges absorbing what you would have us learn about who you are and how we are to respond to you. And that everything that we hear, God, that you would help us to take it and live it out in the world so that Jesus would be known. I ask, Father, also if there's anyone here that doesn't know Jesus as his or her Savior, that this would be the day that their hearts would open and accept the free gift of salvation that Jesus offers. And that they, too, would have the joy of knowing you. So, Lord, just guide us this morning. Help us to hear your voice. And it, I pray all of this in your Son's name. Amen. So if you all would stand and we'll sing. <coughs>
every fiber of your being that you enjoy your hope and that you praise him and that you know that you will never die alone, that this is something that is away from you and that you will spend eternity in heaven with Jesus.
Just a reminder why Terry gets a microphone and I don't. Fun every once in a while she hits those high notes, isn't it? Question as we begin this morning. When was the last time you were given a command? Now, I say the word command. I say command and not a tip. Hey, I think this helped me. Perhaps this will help you as well. Command, not a suggestion. Not a, I heard you were going through something here. You know what? Try this. Not a trick. Like, if I were you, I would do this. This is something that's worked in my life. Not even an ultimatum. Look, you should do this. You know, if you don't do it, that's on you. Let the chips fall where they may, but you know what? You really should do this where it's a ultimatum, not a command, but an actual command that you must do such and such. It's black and white, no room for gray. Now, there's something about that word command, isn't there? Something that kind of just makes our blood boil a little bit. Something in us that says, you know what? You can't make me do blankety blank. And if you try to, I'm just going to do the other just because I'm going to do what I'm going to do, and you can't make me na 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 boo boo. Now, I was talking about you, not your kids or your grandkids in that. And I say that because you're going to see this word command jump up four times this morning. Paul is going to give, in his final instructions to the Thessalonians, a series of commands. Um, and the idea is that when you love someone, you're able to have hard conversations with them. That's kind of our main idea. If you love someone, if you care for someone, if you really are committed to someone, sometimes love dictates that we have some hard conversations with people. Again, not that we want to, not that we're looking for it, but Paul's going to use some harsh language, not because he's trying to stick his finger in them, but really because he loves and cares for them. We're going to finish up 1 Thessalonians today. We're in chapter 3, 685 in your Pew Bible, New King James Version if you have a Bible app. As you uh, open up, some of you saw Charlotte sneak in. She's in the back today. Last week she was here in a wheelchair. Today she's upgraded to a knee scooter. So for the next seven weeks, you're going to see her scootering around. Um, that is not a challenge to race her. Um, still seven weeks where she can't put her foot down and walk from her surgery on the first. So after 10 weeks, then she gets to try to walk with her new readjusted foot. So there's a quick update for you. Um, I know some of you are um, wondering how she's doing. So she's in the back. You can say hi to her, yada, yada. But we're going to look in our word. So let's pray. And uh, we'll go through 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Father, you so loved us that you sent us your son, that Jesus died for us, that we are, can be forgiven, that you give us your spirit so that we can be like you that we can know you, that we can follow you. And Father, because you love us, you want what's best for us. And, and sometimes that means having hard conversations and looking at our own hearts and lives. So God, meet us here through your word, we ask. Speak to us this day. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen. So 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 begins with, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord concerning you, that both that you do and will do the things we command you. May the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God, and into the patience of Christ. Verse 6. But we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly, and not according to the tradition which he received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us. For we did not 
uh, for we were not disorderly among you, nor do we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with labor and toil night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you, not because we did not have authority, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. Not now those who are such, we command and exhort you through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. And if anyone does not obey our word <coughs> in this epistle, know that person and do not keep company with him that he may be, be ashamed. Yet do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way, the Lord be with you all. This, this salutation or the salutation of Paul with my own hand, which is a sign in every epistle, so I write, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. If you have a bulletin, you saw the red insert, or excuse me, you saw the blue insert, you saw the yellow insert. Now you can see the white insert. That is our um, outlined three points. Jot down notes as the Lord leads. Last week we had Easter, so we've taken a week off from 2 Thessalonians. We've been in 1st and 2 Thessalonians all of 2022. And we started this journey for two reasons. Times are crazy. And they continue to be crazy and crazy and crazy. And the hope in this world isn't in politics it isn't in government. It's really in our Lord Jesus Christ. And as the world continues to get crazy, we realize that this time here is coming to an end, that at some point Jesus is coming again. Amen? And the, the theme is, look, the Lord is coming. Get your heart and your life right. right? With separate, sanctify yourselves. Understand that, you know, time is short. We live it well. And whether God calls us to breathe his last or God calls us to be together with him in the air, we only have so much time in this earth. And since time is short, we live in light of Jesus. Amen? So the first Thessalonian, the first letter, Paul was there. Paul taught them. Paul challenged our hearts to get right. And like the Thessalonians, sometimes we get it right and sometimes we do our own thing. Can we nod our head at that? And the second letter is Paul is kind of redirecting some of the things that they got wrong. Some of them taught that Jesus has already come and that the church had missed it. Can you imagine? They even thought you were left behind facing the tribulation of the book of Revelation here on this earth. If you think these times are crazy, imagine what everything in the book of Revelation is going to be like. Anybody want to willingly go through that mess? I mean, you think governments are a mess now? Woo! We have not seen anything yet, right? And some people had sold everything, anticipating Jesus come back. And when Jesus didn't come back, they said, oh, I came back in a spiritual sense. But now that we don't have anything, can you help us sell? Can we live off your generosity? So Paul, in this final chapter, is going to begin by redirecting their hearts. They're going to have some tough conversations about some things the church had gotten himself into. And Paul starts the way we probably should all pray. Finally, brethren, pray for us. And we have a prayer chain at your church. And by the way, you can call in the prayer chain. It goes out every day at 4 o'clock. Because we are brothers and sisters in Christ, we pray for one another here in our church. Right? Primarily, things going on in your life, in your immediate family, um, it's great to be able to go to God on behalf of you. Um, it's great to go be able to seek God. It's a, it's a loving thing to do. But it's interesting. We've seen Paul in each chapter ask for prayer. 
Um, but not once does Paul ask for prayer for physical things in his life. Though he'd been shipwrecked, though he'd been beaten, though he'd been, um, has a thorn in the foot, though he has all these things, he doesn't say, Lord, help my back to be straight. I need a good night's rest. How does he ask to pray for us? Lord, not pray for the physical, but pray for the spiritual. Pray that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified in us just as it is in you. Every time Paul asks for prayer, it's always about spiritual things in his life, and it's never about the physical. Paul's ministry is really centered on two things. Well, three things. We, we want to love the Lord, our God, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen? We love Jesus. We love Jesus' people. So how do we do that? We preach the word. We seek God in prayer. That's the foundation of ministry. Right? We preach the word. We seek God in prayer. Because sometimes we think, you know what? If only fill in the blank, right? If only we sang better songs. If only we had a better preacher. If he was only a little bit more funny, people would come. You know what? If only we had cars to give away on Sunday mornings, we could fill the pews. Right? You know, sometimes we go, if only this, if only this, if only this. Look, we can get people with cars. By the way, if you want to donate a car, I could use a car. But if you... Um, but what happens once the cars are given away? Are the people going to stay? Right? We could play more games. We could do... Look, the way we build God's church is foundational on God. We preach the word. We pray. Right? So you know what we're going to do today? We're going to do three things. We're going to preach the word. At the end of service, we're going to be reminded of Jesus' love and sacrifice for us. And then at the final thing we're going to do is we're going to have a time of prayer... And we're going to pray over things in our ministry and pray things in our life, and we'll get to the time of prayer at the end. So pray for us that God's word may run in us just as it is in you. We remember the, the power of the word of God. For by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, right? When God said, let there be light, you know what there was? He didn't pull the oceans out of a hat. He said, let there be plants or animals. And by the very word of God, things were spoken into existence. God's word has power still yet in our lives. Right? So we love God. We love other people. When church is going great, church is pretty simple. Is everyone going to get it? Sometimes we're going to try to get our lives right, and we're going to try to get right with God, and some people are going to encourage us, and some people are going to like our posts on Facebook, and some people are going to say nice things. And you know what some other people are going to do? They're going to get angry, and they're going to get bitter, and, and people you thought should be encouraging are going to be oppositional. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked people for not all have faith, right? Not all the people in your life have faith. Not all the people in your life are going to want to see you go closer to the Lord. And by the way, in life, opposition is what we need to have strength. I'll give you two examples. One, anyone ever see a little baby chicken born? Anyone have the little third grade science experiment where you had chickens or, you know what, you're all a country folk. Ever, any of you ever go out to the chicken bed and just, just see the chicken born? Nod your head yes or just at least nod your head you're awake. See the little beak hit, hit the shell, right? And you see it start break through. And you're like, oh, wow, the little chicken's struggling. What happens if you just open it up for them? And you let the bird out, like, hey, I see you, little guy. I'm going to open up that shell for you. I'm going to let you get out of the, the egg. What happens if you help the chicken break through? It'll never fly, right? It needs that opposition. It needs that struggle to build up the strength so then the wings will work and it can it fly. Some of you guys, you remember back to your high school football days, you, the coach told you to lift weights. Weights, by definition, are opposition. You put weights on the end of the dumbbells, and you get on the bench, and you start to pound it out, 
And the best set, the best one in your set is the last one. It's the one where you're struggling the most. And that opposition is giving you, is building strength in your body. If you never max out, you never move on to greater weights. In our faith, God gives us opposition, right? Not all life is cake and ice cream, right? You need struggles. You need to go through the dark valleys because it's when we are in the dark valley. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil because thou art with me. When we're in the dark valley, we look up, we go, oh, God is here and he's been here all along. So one of the things that helps our faith is to go through times of struggle. And sometimes we go through times of struggles in our lives. And by the way, sometimes we go through times of struggles at the church. But the Lord will, the Lord is always faithful, and he will establish you and guard you from the evil one. We looked at that word established in 1 Thessalonians. It's the idea of God uses the opposition to allow the roots to grow deep. Why? Because the deeper the roots grow, the taller the plant can become. And we need the roots of our faith to grow deep into the soil that we see God moving in every area of our life. Again, the theme today is God loves us, and because we love people, we have hard conversations. And we look to verse 4, we see Paul's hope. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you that you will do, that you do and will do the things that we, what's that C word? Command you. May the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. Right? We know what we want. We want verse 5, right? We want God to direct our hearts. We want to see the love of God flow deep in our lives. We want the patience of Christ to be lived out in us. Amen? Right? And to get these things, you know, because God loves us, because God, Paul loved the church, we're going to have these hard conversations. We're going to see this word command. We're going to see it three times coming up. So Paul's word, hope is, hey, I love you guys. We're going to say some hard things. And because we say some hard things, not because we are oppositional, but because we love you. So the, the, there's four hard conversations. I think the first three are going to be primarily for the church and Thessalonians, but we're going to go through them all. And I think the fourth one is going to hit you right between the eyes. And I'm setting you up. I'm warning you, right? Because you're going to go, oh, that one doesn't apply to me. I'm cool. Oh, that one doesn't apply to me. I'm good. Oh, that one doesn't apply to me. I'm okay. And then the fourth one, I think for a lot of you, is going to be going like, oh, he might be talking about me now. Just, just warning you, okay? So we'll go through the, the, the first three. Three commands. Ver, uh, number one, verse six. We command you, again, not suggest, not tip, not, not any of these things. We command you, brethren, brothers and sisters of Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every believer who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition he received from us. So you know there's people in your church that are stirring up some stuff. Right? They've sold their possessions. They preach that Jesus has already come. They're caused in dissension. By the way, we've been in churches, right? How many of you like to be in church when there's a lot of dissension? Nobody. I got your attention, but I got some scowls. I understand. I appreciate it. The idea of withdrawal, back up, put some distance. Look, if they're going to cause trouble, they can go cause some trouble over there. Can somebody give me an amen? <laughs> Love it. Paul's like, this isn't the example I sent for you. Right? You saw my example. You saw my work ethic. I had the authority to charge you. I had the authority to do all these things. But no, 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 no. My job isn't to point you to me. My job is to point you back to Jesus. So when I was there, I set this example so that you could see God's love in me. Second command. For when we were with you, we commanded you that if anyone does not work, neither shall he eat. Right? That really, 
Charity is for the needy, not for the greedy. For if you hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but, but who are busybodies. So the idea of a busybody is people who are about everybody else's business and not their own. Right? These are gossip. These are the ones who like to hear all the news or all the tea, all the gossip, and who are quick to spread a rumor or a lie about somebody else. Nod your head if you know these people in your life. Right? By the way, we live in 2022. It's never been is easier to be a busybody. I mean, we have things called Facebook and Instagram where we get to be nosy and we get to be all up in everybody else's business. Paul actually addressed this when he was um, in 1 Thessalonians. Oh, actually, you know what? We're going to get that one in a second. So kind of going with being busybodies, he says, Now we command you and exhort you through the Lord Jesus Christ that you work in quietness and that you eat your own bread. So instead of being about everybody else's business, instead of investing your time and your energy and your life and knowing everything and, and liking every post and, and being about all the gossip of the church, Paul says that you should work in quietness and eat your own bread. Um, this idea of work in quietness we actually saw in 1 Thessalonians. This is where I want to get to on my slides here. It says that you aspire to leave a quiet life that you mind your own business, and that you work with your own hands. Um, I remember when we went through this in 1 Thessalonians, I quoted that great theologian Elvis, where he said, Lord, help me be about my own business. Right? Some of you didn't find humor in that. That's okay. <laughs> Look, not every joke is going to land. I, I, you want me to stop ta trying? Some of you are like, yeah. <laughs> My wife should not be so excited over that one. I tease. She married me because I make her laugh. Sometimes. Okay. Look, this is the will of God for you. When you're a busybody, you want to be the center of everything, and you want to know everything, and you want people to come to you. Our goal as Christians is not to get people to follow us, but our goal as Christians is to get people to follow Christ. Right? That our goal is to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, so that people see Jesus living in me, that I am the hands and feet of Christ, that my life is the, cer is the only Bible some people are ever going to read, my actions are the only Christ some people will ever see. So if you are consumed about knowing and being the center of all the gossip and everything else, you're really just making yourself the center of attention as opposed to making Christ the most important thing in your life. And by the way, 2022, never been easier to do that. People make livings off this, right? They're called quote-unquote influencers. And I'm not just talking like decent living, six, seven figures making themselves a brand, promoting different products for companies. And what, is, what does that revolve around? It revolves around the individual and their lifestyle. And our lifestyle should be to be quiet, do our own work, point people back to the Lord. And Paul's like saying in so many words, stop it. So we've got four commands. First three were pretty easy. When people are causing trouble, withdraw for them. Not shun them, and we're going to come back to that round. But look, our job is to love Jesus and to love other people. Okay. Second command, if you don't work, you don't eat. Some of you are like, amen. Like, charity's for the needy, not for the greedy. Like, we rely upon God and not government bailouts. Like, we get this stuff, right? We're good. Number three, don't be a busybody. Live a quiet life, work with your hands. We're like, we're good, yes, hard work. Never been afraid of a, an honest day's labor, right? Now there's one more. And this one is a little sneaky one. Again, 
We're going to have hard conversations because we love you. I'm going to say some pointed things this morning. Where are we at here? We are in verse, well, let me just, uh, lost my place. We are in verse 13. I was going to get there eventually. The pause is for effect. But as for you, brethren, and this is kind of the climax, this is the contrast for all these commands, for as you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. Um, there's two ways we can translate this, and I'm going to give you both translations, because I think both translations have a word for us. So don't grow weary in doing good. I think weary is a great 2022 word. Because nod your head if you've ever felt weary with everything going on the last couple of years. When I was writing this message a few weeks ago, I was having a conversation with Charlotte. And she's like, well, how are you really doing today? I'm like, Charlotte, you know how sometimes you get a low-grade fever? Like, you're not fully sick, but you're not fully right either. And, like, you got some aches and, you, you know, you're taking your temperature. And you're like, I just, I just feel a little off. Nod your head if you've ever been there. I'm like, I feel a little low-grade weary, just like everything going on. You know, now when I was writing this, we had this war in, a, in Ukraine that was new, and I'm like, man, another thing. And it's like, I just want to jump in a time machine, go to a desert island, and be there for three weeks to decompress. Chase is like, I want to ride shotgun. I appreciate it, buddy. Just three weeks? I'll take three months if you're offering. But what happens is, like, sometimes we, we, feel, we feel weary just going through all the things in our day. We feel weary going through all the things in our week. We feel rushed just trying to get everything and every kid and everybody where they need to be, just trying to make all the normal things of life happen. And we get so consumed in our own head and we get so consumed in our own schedule and we get so consumed in our own life that we, we really forget this verse, right? Brethren, don't grow weary in getting through life. Don't grow weary in getting through your week. Don't grow weary in getting all the activities in. It says don't grow weary in doing good, right? Because sometimes we're so busy and we're so consumed that the thing that we should be doing is the thing that gets pushed out. Right? We should love God and we should love other people. And sometimes we are so weary, just everything we have going on in life, that the thing we get pushed out is actually the thing that is the most important, being a light for Jesus Christ in the world he's given you. Look, you're the only Jesus that people are going to see at your work. You're the only Bible that your family members are going to read. And sometimes we get so weary and get so overwhelmed by everything going on, that which is most important is the thing that it ends up being pushed out. Nod your head if that's ever happened to you. And the word today, the first of two, is don't grow weary in that which is going to be eternal. Don't grow weary in sharing and showing the love of God in the community he's called you to. So, this is the way most of your translations will translate this phrase. There's some ancient translations that actually translate it completely different. And I'm talking some of the original translators back to the uh, mid-century time. And I love how they translate it, and I wish this would have um, gotten through, but I understand why it didn't. Some of the, some of the early fathers translate it this way. Don't be a coward in doing good. That is a little harder, doesn't it? Don't be a coward, do good. How many of you had seen the, have seen the opportunity to do good, to be loving, to share, to go out of your way to help someone? You knew the opportunity was there, but you chose not to do it. And what is that really? That's being a coward. Or, we'll, 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 we'll bring it back down a little bit so it's not quite so harsh. We'll say it this way. 
we use our excuses to pass up opportunities. And we say, yeah, but, for example, some of you got people at work. Some of you got family members. Some of you people have people who could really use your help. And you're like, yeah, but I'm really busy. So you don't help. Yeah, but that, you know how much extra work I'd have to do on top of all the work I'm currently doing? Yeah, but I'd actually have to go out and, and make an extra stop, and, and I'd have to figure out an extra hour in my week, and, and I had to do all these extra things. And, and, and yeah, yeah, the opportunity's there, but I got all this going on. Yeah, but that would be a little awkward to start that conversation. Yeah, but I, I might be a little uncomfortable. And what we end up doing is we end up, yeah, budding all the opportunities God has given us. Yeah, but God, I'm, I'm in a rush. Yeah, but God, I'm tired. Yeah, but God, it's a Friday and I'm just trying to get through this day. Yeah, but God, blankety, blankety, blank. And God's like, yeah, but I love you. And, and I sent you here to be that person's voice, to be their hands and feet. And God's saying, don't grow weary, don't be a coward, don't use your excuses for the opportunities I've given you. Look, love you. We're going to have this hard conversation. It's never been easier to make up, um, make up excuses, but we keep making excuses and we keep failing to see the opportunities God has for you. Let's go through a couple of truths. We believe God is alive and well. Right? We believe that God doesn't want anyone to perish but have everlasting life. That God so loved you that he sent his son. In a couple of minutes, we're going to take communion. We're going to be reminded of God's great love for us. But God so loved you, he sent his son. God so loved the people around you that God has now sent you. How beautiful are the feet who bring the good news of Jesus to the world around them. And we're like, yeah, God, we know you're alive, but, but God, can't you send somebody else? And God's like, no, 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 I'm sending you. Don't grow weary. Don't be a coward. Don't use your excuses. God has placed you there as his missionary to help reach your community. So at the end of the service, at the beginning, I said we're going to do a couple things. We're going to look at God's word, we're going to remind it of God's love, and we're going to pray. And this is how we're going to pray as we conclude in a few minutes. Who are the people in your life that you're yeah budding? Oh, I love my kids, but you know, I'm going to push them off. I'm not going to be the example my kids or my grandkids need to be. You know, some of you feel a little bit of guilt right now. And by the way, guilt isn't necessarily a bad thing. That's sometimes God t knocking on the door of your heart saying, yeah, look, this little guilt, this little uneasiness, that's me shaking you a little bit. Right? Don't grow weary. Don't be a coward. Who are you yeah budding? Who do we need to pray for? Who do we need God to give you a little bit more courage? You know what? God can do amazing things in your life if you would just give him 10 cents of pure, unadulterated courage. God gives you the opportunity. What would what could God do if you would give God 10 seconds of pure courage in your life? Will you open your mouth? Will you step forward? We actually put some action into your faith. Look, this is the hard conversation for you this morning. God loves you. Let's stop growing weary and doing good. A couple more slides. A couple of final thoughts, Paul, just to wrap this up. Uh, verse 14, anyone doesn't obey our word in this epistle, note that person, don't keep company with them. That's pretty harsh, isn't it? Like, this isn't a word for everybody else, this is a word for you, don't let this word go by you. Don't count them as an enemy. We don't write people off, God doesn't write us off, but if people don't get it, verse 15, admonish him as a brother. So Paul's saying, look, God has a word for you this morning. If you see other people here in the church who don't get that word, you love them, have a difficult conversation with them. 
Right? This is it coming full circle. Yeah, but God, they need it more than I do. No, 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 you need it too. And if you see people slacking off, if you see people getting distant from God, if you see people falling away, we don't write people off. God doesn't write us off. We admonish them. We love people here at Harmony Grove enough to have some difficult conversations with them. Last three verses are a benediction. Verse 16 and 18 are great prayers. May the peace himself give you peace in every way. May the peace of God be on all your lives. Amen? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. It actually says amen there. Amen? So what we're going to do is we're going to close in prayer. We're going to sing in a moment. Um, prepare our hearts. We're going to be reminded of God's great love for us. We're going to have communion. As we prepare, we ask ourselves, who is God calling you to share the love of God with this week? Who have you been yabbotting? How have you been using your excuses to be distant from God? At the end, after communion, we're going to close. We're going to have a time of group prayer together. And we've been doing this once a month for the last few months. We'll go through, we'll give some more instruction, but that'll be our final um, time here. So I'll pray, we'll sing, we'll take communion. We good so far? I know, a lot of things happening. I just want to make sure you understand where we're at. So let's pray together. God, we, God, we know that you so loved us, you sent your son. God, we know um, that... You love us, and because you love us, you discipline us, you redirect us. You want what's best for us. Lord, sometimes we have to have hard conversations, and we have to look at our own heart. So God, we pray that during this time of communion and this time of preparation, as we examine our hearts, as we do business with you, Lord, that you would reveal yourself, Lord, that you would not only prepare for communion, but, Lord, we would be prepared to be used by you this week. So we're so thankful for your word. You're so thankful for the love of Jesus. God, we're so thankful to be able to celebrate that here in a moment through communion. So it's in Jesus we ask. Amen. So we're going to pray, take my light. We're going to sing, take my life, let it be. Elders or those who are serving can make their way up, and we'll begin for, we'll prepare for communion. So stand and sing with us. You can have a seat. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself so he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For whoever eats and drinks in an unworthy manner 
will be guilty of the, um, eats and, will eat, let me say this again. For whoever eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment for himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So God calls us not to just be hearers of the word, but to be doers of the word. So as we hear this word, it doesn't come in one ear, make a smile and go out the other ear. It goes in one ear, it rests in our heart, so God may speak in our lives. So as you heard God's word this morning, um, as we take communion here in a second, we don't do so in an unworthy manner. This is a time where we realign our heart to the heart of God and realign our actions to what God has for us. That God so loved you, he sent his son. That Jesus came, and as he lived, he shared and he showed the love of God. And as we who have received Christ as our Savior, he calls us to go and do likewise. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. That God so loved you, he sent his son. That Jesus not only lived, but he went to the cross. His body was broken. He paid for your sin. He was dead. He was buried. He rose again. He's defeated our sin and our death. So now God so sends us. So in a moment, I'm going to pray, and we're going to pass out the bread. And as we pass out the bread, continue to you know, do business with God. Continue to pray. Continue to seek God. Continue to listen and uh, align your heart to the things of our Lord. God, we thank you that you so loved us that you sent your Son. Lord, for those of us who have accepted and who believe, we, we take this communion as a reflection of what you've done in our life. And God, that we are not just called to receive, but we are called to now go and be your voices, to be your disciples, to let our light, light shine in the world around us. So Lord, allow us to use this time to align our hearts, to align our thoughts, to get right with you, Lord, because you have done so much for us. So it's in Jesus we pray. Amen.
So we take, and we eat, and then we're sipping. So Christ came, he lived, he died. He took upon your sin and my sin, your shame and my guilt, and it's by his stripes we are healed. That Christ loved us, and he lived, and he died, and his body was broken, and his blood was shed. But death would not be the end. But praise be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because though he came and though he died and was buried, on the third day Christ rose again. Right? The story of Easter is a story for us 365 days. That Christ on the cross, he took our sin, and through his resurrection, he defeated our sin. And he defeated death, and he gives us life, and he gives us life everlasting. And if you would trust and believe in Jesus, you don't have to perish. You can have everlasting life. And if you've never done so, you can bow your heads, you can pray, you can accept Christ's love for you. And for the rest of us who've accepted and received, we take communion as a reminder of what Christ has done, but we also take it as a time of reflection of what Christ wants us to do going forward. So let's have communion.